Here we go again. I told you that it was going to be one of the most amazing fights that this boxing generation will witness. And guess what? It's at the heavyweight division. And when the heavyweight division is intact, so is all of boxing. But today we're gonna get started with giving you guys some of the breakdowns and insight from this fight. And it was an absolute epic fight for those who did not get an opportunity to see it. And at the end of this broadcast, I'm going to give you my true insight after we go through the numbers and the breakdown on the styles. But before we get started, I'd like to introduce myself for those who have never watched this channel. Shame on you. My name is Eric A. Bradley, AKA The Real Fight Doctor, and there is no other on this level. Back to the topic at hand. Now the matchup on Saturday night was exactly what I spoke of earlier. One giant against another giant. The styles were gonna make one of the most amazing fights that you were gonna ever see. And how did Tyson Fury become a master boxer inside of that ring against such a heavy puncher? First and foremost, here are several things that Tyson Fury did to keep that power locked inside of Deontay's hand. What Tyson Fury did is he did what we call posturing and feints. Now take a look right here. You see right here, he's throwing the postures, the feints. Deontay Wilder can't figure out what Tyson's gonna do, so he basically has to not throw a punch. He definitely doesn't wanna walk into a punch, so what he has to do is put his hands in his pocket. Tyson changes postures because it alludes that he's gonna throw another punch. When it's all said and done, the postures are for defensive purposes and it prevents the offensive guy from wanting to throw, and that's what you call handcuffing him. Here's one of the other things that Tyson Fury did. He went into the eye of the storm. Now, I called for this on the pre-fight breakdown, so if you haven't seen this, go to Master Boxing across the board and see the pre-fight breakdown where I told you that Tyson Fury would have to go into the eye of the storm. Now, take a look right here. Now what you'll see right here is Tyson Fury. He throws the same one twos that he was throwing throughout the fight. But then as you see, he adds that three. He got right into the eye of the storm, stepped in and boom, he cracked him right on the inside. Matter of fact, this was after the fact that he got dropped. So it goes to show you how effective that is. And coaches, keep learning, keep educating your fighters, keep walking them through the process, even at the highest level, it's a daring feat when you're walking into power like that. Now, let's go over here and check out what Deontay Wilder did or failed to do. Here you'll see Deontay Wilder consistently what we call telegraphing a punch. See what telegraphing does, telegraphing is basically when you show the punch, pull the punch, throw the punch. Basically, Tyson's alarm was on, so his signals, he saw the punch coming, he was able to react the fact that Tyson's such a masterful defender. So basically what Tyson would do is just basically slip outside of the punch. Didn't have to take a big slip. It was just a little slip, a little slight of a move. Right behind that shoulder, punch was missed. He could counter or move. He had a choice. Now, as you see, as the fight progressed all the way through the 12th, Deontay decided to do exactly what Tyson did. He decided to follow the game plan. As we said in the pre-fight breakdown, a throwaway jab, which Deontay did, he can throw the right hand to the body or head and follow it with a left hook. Now, the one-two is kind of coinciding with itself, but the third shot is a pause. So it's boom, boom, slide in just enough, boom, close the gap by inches and get maximum results. And you can see right here as he does it, boom, 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 and then Tyson was out. At least, for a six or seven, eight count. Now, these are some of the things that if you're a fighter, you must become a master at these things. So it takes a lot of training, a lot of outside of the ring watching, a lot of inside of the ring executing. Now, before I get to closure, one of the things that you'll note is that Tyson Fury's defense was so on tack with a little help 
from Deontay Wilder missing and telegraphing the punches, his punch percentage dropped exponentially. As you look over here at the punch stats, you see Deontay Wilder dropped 16% of his jabs. That's very low. His power shots were low too at 17%. And overall connect percentage for the entire fight, this is from telegraphing and loading up on punches, 17% total. Those are negatively staggering numbers. And that's what happens when you don't let your hands go freely. You, you try to load up on all the punches. So you gotta be careful, young fighters, fighters who are at the elite level, but still, when you get in the ring at that level, you have to polish those things up. Composure, listen to your coaches, and be sure to take the game to the next level. Tyson landed 21% of his jabs, 37% of his power shots, and 26% of all of his punches combined. That was an acceptable number. But when it's all said and done, this game is tough. Now, closing insights for you guys out there from the boxing world, those diehard fans, casual fans, all of you guys that'll see this. After Saturday night, the game is gonna be in a much better place and you can feel the traction and the energy from it today. I don't want you guys to think so hard about who you like, what team you're on. What you need to think about is what happened on Saturday night for the sport of boxing. As the heavyweight division takes his pinnacle, so does the rest of the game. What we want you to do is take a second and think of one person that you can share the event with that happened Saturday night because our narrative in the sport of boxing is purely entertainment, teaching people how to overcome things that are holding you back in life, just like Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury was not simply fighting a fight. Deontay Wilder wasn't fighting a fight. But one thing about Tyson Fury, he was fighting for a cause. And that's one of the reasons he got up off of that canvas. All of that energy, all of that love. For some strange reason, he was able to mutate that into getting up in fortitude which we haven't seen things like that, especially when a man has gotten knocked out, clearly unconscious, and then gotten up off the canvas, just like that. They both came in and did exactly what they said they were gonna do. Tyson said he would come in there and box Deontay's lights out. And Deontay Wilder said, I'd knock him out. And he did. He just woke up before the count of 10. Share these things with your friends. And until next time, we out of here. Make sure you share the post, subscribe to the channel, and smash that like button. Until the next time, we cover Adrian Broner, Manny Pacquiao. Stay locked and follow Master Boxing across the board. We keeping it locked in the sport of boxing. Welcome to Fox Network. They're in the building. Peace. He jab, and when he sees the right hand, he has to be willing to go into the lion's den pop.